Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi there. Good morning. It is Thursday, July 20th. Happy Thursday or practice Friday. <laughs> I like oh, that one. You know, we, we got to be positive here. But also some positive news. Two people in our area won a million dollars out of that jackpot. Not the full thing, but a million dollars. Sarah, I mean, our I was not one of them. I, yeah. No. 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 That's why we're here today. I somebody was, in Pleasanton and somebody in San Marcos. That's so impressive. Oh, we're my bottom goodness. at those locations. Meanwhile, I was looking at my Powerball ticket sobbing. Last night. I'm just kidding. I won eight dollars. <laughs> wow, way to go. I know, but I spent twelve, so that is okay. <laughs> okay. You give a little, you get a little, right? Right. All right. So, hey, in the aquifer, the aquifer is down quite a lot, uh, actually, over the last 24 hours, down more than half a foot uh, to 628 feet ab below, above the sea level, which is, you know, the lowest the aquifer has been since 2014. So our aquifer could desperately use a drink of water. Unfortunately, rain chances do not look great in the coming days. And molds, though, there's some positive news. Moles are low appropriately at 210 uh, this morning around San Antonio. Now, as you look at temperatures and clouds, we are seeing some more cloud cover this morning than we saw yesterday. That's going to shave off maybe a degree from our high, but it's still going to be a hot one. Good morning in Bandera. It's 76 degrees, 79 in Bulverde, 82 at Stinson, 82 in Castroville, 82 in New Braunfels. But this is a look at the forecast highs today. Forecast highs around 103 in San Antonio. It'll be maybe just shy of 100 in Bernie and Bulverde, but likely going to see some triple digits in the Hill Country too. 102 in Kerrville, 104 in Seguin, 104 in Divine. All right, so since our weather pattern is fairly stagnant, we've been starting to uh, set records at the San Antonio International Airport, which is the official weather site. So I thought I would ask for Weather 101 today. Where where were San Antonio's first official weather records kept in the 1880s? Fort Sam Houston, the Dulnig Building, Maverick Building, or Hicks Building? At one point, there were weather records kept at all of these places, but which one was the first? I'll have the answer to that and a little background on our weather records coming up in just a bit. See you in a few, Sarah. Thank you. Gunshots are the first sound some people heard this morning in one apartment complex. Someone shot a teenager who was riding in a car nearby on Calibra Road near Callahan. Katrina Weber is at the scene and tells us San Antonio police believe the shooter was in another car. The police have been focusing on that green Kia right there, the one where they found the victim. They say that witnesses told them someone in another car was chasing this one and then fired the shots. Now, a neighbor told me she heard those gunshots, followed by a scream and the sound of a car crashing. When officers arrived here before 6 this morning, they say they found the car with the victim, a teenager, hanging out of the back of it. He had been shot in his back and head. Now, initially, police thought this was a fatal shooting, but that teen was rushed to a hospital where doctors have been working to save his life. Officers found two other people down the street who they believe had been in the car with the victim and ran from it. And that could be because they believe the car was stolen. The shooter drove away. Now, at this point, police don't have a description of the shooter or that other car involved, and they also don't know why this shooting happened. Reporting from the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Other top story this morning, 12 migrants, including a pregnant woman, were found huddled together in the back of the cab of a stolen 18-wheeler in South Bear County. That's according to the Bear County Sheriff's Office. It happened just after 10 last night on I-35 near Fisher Road in Varn Army area. Deputies say a Varn Army patrol unit was following the 18-wheeler, ran the plate number, and found that it was stolen. After a short chase, BCSO says the semi-truck pulled over on I-35 and the driver was found with a gun. The migrants were all in good health and the driver was taken into custody. And trunking companies call it the team driving concept. One person drives the semi while the other rests in the back of the cab. It's used to increase time spent on the road and maximize profits. But one San Antonio attorney claims in a lawsuit the practice contributed to a crash that left his client with permanent injuries. KSAT Investigates Dylan Collier explores the collision of circumstances. <laughs> Dashboard camera video shows the moment a semi-truck was hit from behind by another 18-wheeler east of Little Rock. The February 17, 2021 crash on ice-covered roads came in the middle of an Arctic winter blast 
that caused catastrophic cold in portions of the southern United States. Driver Israel Rodriguez said his rig began sliding before hitting the semi in front of him and wiping out a smaller truck pulling a trailer, later testifying that his tractor trailer had snow chains for its tires, but they were not on when the crash happened. A truck driver is potentially operating an 80,000 pound missile. Attorney Sean Meckler represents the man whose semi was rear-ended. He said his client suffered spinal injuries that will impact him the rest of his life. Six months after the crash, Meckler filed a lawsuit in Webb County against Rodriguez and the Laredo-based trucking company he was driving for. The conglomerate hauls more than 300 freight trailers under the names DX Express and Directo Express. While gathering evidence for the negligence suit, Meckler said he uncovered troubling information about the company's driving habits, specifically how long and how often Rodriguez had been behind the wheel. In a tape deposition, Rodriguez said after pulling off to be inspected at mile marker 22 outside Laredo, he then drove nonstop to Little Rock before stopping to refuel around 750 miles in all during one of the worst winter storms in the history of the southern United States. The crash occurred a short time later after he got onto Interstate 40 toward Memphis. Rodriguez testified that he had encountered ice on the road the entire stretch between Dallas and Little Rock. We know he was probably driving in excess of 18 to 20 hours at the time of the wreck. Then there's this, Rodriguez's testimony about his grueling work schedule. He claimed he would drive for 10 hours, switch with his teammate to rest in the sleeper berth for 10 hours, and then move back to driving, repeating the cycle for two months before taking time off and returning to Mexico. A safety coordinator for the trucking company testified that having a team driver allows them to technically never stop. Quote, so basically, it's always out making money. Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration rules require tractor trailer drivers to take breaks every eight hours and to limit the number of hours they can be on the road per day and on consecutive days. And they were just switching off every 10 hours, every 10 hours, every 10 hours. And if you, you know, extrapolate that data, that's a violation of the hours of service rules. After the trucking firm settled the case earlier this year for a six-figure amount, admitting to no liability or wrongdoing by Rodriguez or the company, Meckler took the unusual step of reporting Directo and DX to federal authorities, writing in his complaint that he is scared for the safety of the motoring public. FMCSA officials informed Meckler the agency would not conduct a new probe because it investigated the company in June of last year. Quote, the occurrence of noncompliance referred to in your complaint has been previously identified and is being addressed appropriately. For KSAT Investigates, I'm Dylan Collier. Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration records show Directo Express had nine hours of service violations in the past two years. Its sister company, the larger DX Express, has had 94 hours of service violations during that same period. The company's owner did not respond to phone calls seeking comment for this story. The trucking firm's attorney told KSAT he would have challenged Rodriguez's deposition testimony had the case gone to trial and that no violations occurred. Quote, Directo Express does not expect or condone breaking hours of service requirements, end quote. In your morning headlines, President Biden heading to Philadelphia this morning to deliver remarks about the U.S. economy. As ABC's Faith Abube reports, the trip comes as Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and other economists are becoming more hopeful that the U.S. will likely avoid a recession in the near future. This morning, President Biden heading to a steel-cutting ceremony in Philadelphia, where the White House says he'll announce the first-ever Made in America offshore wind vessel. The massive project employing more than 1,000 union workers and estimated to have an economic impact of $125 million every year. The announcement coming just one day after the Biden administration also revealed a crackdown on companies that charge consumers hidden fees. Folks are tired of being played for suckers. The president proposing new action to address junk fees in areas like rental housing, air travel, concerts, and health care. The administration also laying out new guidelines for corporate mergers as they push Bidenomics. Bidenomics is about increasing competition, not, not stifling competition. When companies have to compete, it means lower prices, fairer wages, and more innovation. 
Critics fear the administration's regulatory efforts could backfire and leave the economy worse off. But Treasury Secretary Jenna Yellen telling Bloomberg TV that the economy is on a good path. Data shows decreasing inflation and a historic low unemployment rate. Our labor market continues to be quite strong. Um, I don't expect a recession. Still, despite a robust jobs market and other improving economic indicators, polls show a significant number of Americans remain skeptical about President Biden's handling of the economy. A new Monmouth University national poll published on Wednesday found that President Biden's approval rating on tackling inflation is at 34 percent, while on jobs and unemployment, he has a 47 percent approval rate. And according to economists, one major reason why Americans are not giving credit to the president on the economic recovery is because there is a disconnect between the improving economic data and how people actually feel they're doing in their everyday lives. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. In other news, money matters are a top concern for many military families, but they might be getting some assistance soon. The House's latest defense bill outlines several proposed measures, including a pay raise, additional employment help for military spouses, and more assistance for housing and child care. The Senate is now considering the legislation. And the lucky winner of the Powerball drawing is in Los Angeles, California. One lucky person had a ticket matching all six numbers in last night's drawing. The jackpot worth an estimated $1.08 billion. That's a cash value of $558 million. And like we said earlier, Two winners locally for a million dollars in San Marcos and Pleasanton, but also Mega Millions continues on Friday. Uh, yeah, Mega and, and is uh, huge. Is is pretty mega right now. Over seven twenty, right? Seven hundred twenty yeah, million. It is seven hundred twenty million dollars, and that's for tomorrow night's Mega Millions okay. drawing. So we still have a chance. We do right now. Nine oh nine, eighty two degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at nine. Big story here: a possible change of venue for the Spurs has a lot of people talking. Brings people here to kind of see what's going on over here on the east side. So it will be a travesty. They've been here 20 years and haven't fulfilled that promise. Let them stay here another 20 years and get it cleaned up, and then they can go wherever in the city they want to go. Garrett Berenger explains what city leaders are proposing and when, if anything, will happen. And the extreme weather conditions around the U.S. continue to top the headlines. New records keep being set. And when we come back, we'll tell you who's seeing the worst of it. Today is our KSAC Community Phone Bank to help raise money for Project MEND. It is the oldest and largest licensed nonprofit that accepts and repurposes medical equipment. We will be accepting donations over the phone to buy more wheelchairs, which is the most requested and needed piece of equipment. Phone Bank today runs today from noon to 2 p.m. and then again from 5 p.m. through 1030 tonight. And this is all leading up to the organization's annual citywide donation drive that's happening this weekend. You can drop off any type of medical equipment at the Wonderland of America Saturday from 9 to 1 p.m. For more information, just check out ksatcommunity.com. Well, now to the extremes and weather conditions from coast to coast and the rising death toll from this historic summer so far. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest on the destruction and the record in parts of the U.S. <laughs> A tornado packing 150 mile per hour winds destroyed homes and businesses northeast of Raleigh, North Carolina. Is it coming this way? Tearing apart this Pfizer plant in Rocky Mount, scattering medicine around the complex. There's obviously going to be impacts to Pfizer's operations here, how much potential medicine or healthcare supplies may be lost as a result, potential impacts on the supply chain. In southwest Kentucky, up to a foot of rain flooded neighborhoods, prompting the governor to declare an emergency. The storms fueled by triple-digit heat baking much of the country. In Phoenix, the low temperature was 97 yesterday, an all-time record. Officials in Maricopa County, Arizona, say at least 18 people have died from the heat so far this summer. We're starting to see those individuals with other medical problems, and even those that are healthy that are exposed to these extreme temperatures, come in with a variety of conditions. In Florida, a farm worker's death in the heat this month is prompting change. The Miami-Dade County Commission is supporting new protections for workers, which would include the right to a 10-minute paid rest and shaded water breaks every two hours. It's not just hot air in Florida. 
the ocean temperature is in the 90s, about six degrees above average, threatening the coral reefs. It doesn't happen like that. Like no. it takes a lot for water to heat up. No, I mean even breaking an air temperature by six degrees is pretty impressive. You know, mm -hmm. to break a record by so to, to do it in the ocean is just incredible. There are problems inside too. Many air conditioners can't keep up. Experts say most AC units are only designed to work in heat up to 95 degrees, but with temperatures well above 100 in so many places, repair calls are surging. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Already 82 degrees at 916. Uh, Sarah was what, 104 yesterday? It are was. We, are we going to get to that again today or is it going to be a little Cold higher? front, it's going to be 103 today. <laughs> Burr. Wow. <laughs> Uh, I was <laughs> shivering already. I was lured by the two words cold front. I just was soaking those in for a millisecond. I know. we got to wait until probably late September, early October for that. But here's the good news. The Earth will eventually tilt away from the sun. Yes. Thank goodness. The northern hemisphere <laughs> will. It just will happen in late yeah. September. But we have been talking about records lately and, you know, heat streaks, those kinds of things. So I wanted to take a moment and talk about where records are kept. So records in San Antonio have been kept since 1880. The 1880s. Where was San Antonio's first official weather records kept in the 1880s? Fort Sam Houston, the Dolnick Building, the Maverick Building, and the Hicks Building. And guys, by the way, weather records have been kept at these locations at some point. Okay, Sarah? I'm going to go with A, Fort Sam. That's what was going to be my guess. Okay. Guys, nailed it. Fort oh, Sam Houston. So smart. In the 1880s, that's where official weather records were kept. But since 1942, they have been kept at the San Antonio International Airport. And if you're curious as to why that is, we've got an article on KSAT.com right now. Why is the airport the official weather site for the Alamo City? You can go ahead and scan that QR code. It'll take you to an article that me and Montgomery wrote. A really fascinating article. And it goes into the history of weather records in San Antonio as well. All right, it's partly cloudy and 82 degrees outside. We're actually seeing a little bit more cloud cover hang on than we did yesterday and that's why we shaved off a degree from the high temperature 103 it's still going to be hot though regardless south southeast winds at about 10 miles per hour take a look at clouds and temperatures good morning in del rio it's 83 and it is sunny out in del rio this morning 77 in rock springs and 78 in kerrville i'll tell you what this is the time of the year where living in the higher elevations helps you shave off a few degrees from the high temperatures 82 in pleasant and 82 in New Braunfels, 84 in Gonzales. And again, you can see it's clear up in the hill country, but we are dealing with mostly cloudy skies from Floresville to Pleasanton throughout San Antonio. But those skies will quickly clear. And here's a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast today. 92 at noon and in the afternoon, we're going to be right at 103 for the high, a degree shy of the record uh, of 104 for the day. And tonight, temperatures are going to still struggle to cool down. We'll still be in the uh, 90s by 9 p.m. So looking at forecast highs in your neighborhoods, it's going to be 98 in Rock Springs, avoiding 100 degrees in Rock Springs. Way to go. 102 in Yavaldi, 103 in Gonzales, 104 in Pleasanton, 102 in Canyon Lake. And today's dew point forecast does call for the humidity to drop in the afternoon. So this is, again, the silver lining. The positive thing about our forecast is it's so hot that the humidity is not as high in the afternoon. Dew points come down into the 50s. So you'll You'll notice less humidity, more of a dry heat during the peak heat of the day. We won't have to deal with the heat index today. Speaking of heat index, we've got a great segment coming up in the next half hour about how dangerous the heat index can be at times. Take a look at the weather setup. You can see that across the state of Texas, there's not all that much going on other than a couple of showers in the panhandle. That's because we've got that heat high, that big blue bully right overhead, keeping out rain and cranking up temperatures. But the good news is the heat high is going to move a little bit off to the west. And so there's a small window for rain Saturday, Sunday and Monday. We're only talking 10 to 20 percent coverage. So unfortunately, I don't want you to count on the rain. I just wanted to bring that to your attention that there's a small possibility Saturday, Sunday and Monday. If you get rain, buy a lottery ticket. Take a look at that forecast over the next several days. Temperatures climbing to 102 over the next few days with a 20% chance of an isolated shower on Sunday. Coming up in the forecast, we're going to take a look at how many 100 degree days we've had so far this year around San Antonio. I'll have a look at that. 
And of course, again, we're going to talk a little bit about the heat index. Sounds good. Thank you. 920, 82 degrees. Well, kids going to school for the first time, it can be scary, not just for the child, but for parents too. Coming up, we'll tell you about some ways to make sure that transition is smooth and how you can set them up for success. The start of the new school year is right around the corner, which can be exciting, but it could also be a little scary, especially for young kids going to school for the very first time. This is a huge transition, and while parents might not be able to prepare them for everything, health, health experts say there are some things you can do now to set them up for success. CNN's Mandy Gaither shares four things parents and guardians can do to help their first time students. A new school year with new faces, a new classroom. It can be scary for any student, but especially those who are new to school. They don't really have an idea in their mind of what this is going to look like. They don't have something to go off of. Strong for Life licensed therapist Jody Baumstein says preparing children before school starts is critical in easing them into the classroom. The more we can fill in the blanks in their head, the more at ease they will feel. Baumstein says to visit the school so the child knows what it looks like. Meet the teacher and administrator so there are familiar faces on day one. Set up play dates before school starts with other families who have first time students. They can rely on each other and have some sense of familiarity when they get there so that they don't feel alone and so uneasy. Finally, practice with school supplies. Baumstein says if your child isn't sure how to use or open something, it can create a layer of anxiety that can be avoided. It might seem silly and unnecessary, but for kids, it's helpful to know that they're capable and that they can do it without you. And so the more opportunity you can give them a chance to try it in the safety of your home while you're right there if they need help, the more likely they're gonna be able to have the confidence to do it on their own. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. There's been a lot of talk lately about our Spurs potentially moving their arena away from the east side, and some people aren't thrilled about that idea. We learned from a source of the team in the city of San Antonio, we're talking about the future of the franchise once its lease is up at the AT&T Center. Now, the move wouldn't be to Austin or anything like that, but it would be to the downtown area. As Case Hats Garrett Berger reports, some Eastside residents want to keep the AT&T Center right where it's at. From the decor to the name, there's no doubt that the identity of Ball Hogs Barbecue is tied to the Spurs team that plays next door. You know, they ball right there and we sell hogs. Owner Hubert Brown says he gets business from fans going to or from games who need to catch an Uber. He's not keen on the idea of the Spurs moving. It brings people here to kind of see what's going on over here on the east side. So it will be a travesty. But he also says the county owned stadium's presence has not done much to prompt a wider revitalization in the past two decades. But as far as what it all was supposed to be and they're going to develop everything and bring business here, they did not do any of that. At a barbershop further up Houston Street, an east side resident says a downtown move might be beneficial for fans but also talked of the empty promise of development. They've been here 20 years and haven't fulfilled that promise. Let them stay here another 20 years and get it cleaned up, and then they can go wherever in the city they want to go. District 2 Councilman Jalen McKee Rodriguez, who represents the area, tweeted that the county-owned AT&T Center, quote, never fulfilled its promise to spur positive development on the east side, and that a new stadium cannot and should not happen until there are steps to remedy this broken agreement. But not everyone sees it as a bust. David Edmonds lived near the stadium site for about 30 years before the center was built. And he says he sees people moving back. No, there's not no big, big business, but the people are at least the businesses are not moving out like they were doing before the at and center. What could happen if the Spurs move out is anyone's guess. A city hall source called the talks preliminary and informal. And the team has another nine years on its lease here at the at and center. So any move, if it happens, isn't likely to happen soon. I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. We, of course, will keep you posted here on KSAT 12, 928, 82 degrees. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including serious health risks due to the heat we've been experiencing. We'll be joined by a health expert to talk with us about those risks and what you can do to stay cool. Plus, the real estate market may be cooling down. So what does that mean for buyers and sellers? We'll tell you in just about three minutes. 
back. Just about 9.32. The real estate market seems to be easing up. So local real estate agents say home prices are holding steady. However, if you look at the numbers, they're still higher than they have been for a few, year, for a few years ago. Uh, Case Hats Avery Everett sat down with a local realtor who says if you want to move, now might be the time. So we have a living area here. Every house in the market may look a little different. More formal dining out there, and then in here you have a more casual environment. But something here in San Antonio stays the same. A million dollars in California is a whole lot different than a million dollars in San Antonio. Since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen the real estate market heat up and then start to cool down. But based on new data on Google searches, we're seeing that buyers want to move to Texas, and that number isn't small. We're closing at the end of the month. David Anderson has been selling houses in San Antonio for years. He says low cost of living and no state income tax are bringing buyers to Bear County. The buyers and sellers can say like it still is a strong market. This home that's now under contract had an asking price of half a million dollars. Located in the northeast side near Government Hill, it's set to sell by the end of this month to out of state buyers. And Anderson says his sellers are walking away happy. It's still a seller's market. So we're actually in a better position now than we were in 17, 18, 19. Anderson says the market looks a lot like it did before the pandemic, bringing some relief to home buyers with the back-to-back -back bidding wars now slowed down. So this house has been on the market about 45 days. It is long for what people are used to. But in Texas, high interest rates and high home prices are here. The home appreciation, the prices are going up so rapidly. They're still continuing to grow. Any benefit that you would gain from waiting on your interest, you lose on the increase in the price of the home. Hundreds of houses are on the market. Costs you more to wait. But they may not be for long, with Texas top of mind for buyers across the county and the country. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Texas real estate source shows that properties in some San Antonio zip codes have gone up more than 200% since 2016. So if you see your zip code on that list, just head over to ksat.com. Check it out to find out which zip codes are included. All right, let's go back outside with live cam. Already 83 degrees at San Antonio International Airport, where it's another hot day out there on the tarmac. Absolutely, and in spite of the fact that it is very hot, it has been very hot, all of us are trying to enjoy summer, including our pups. Take a look at Sergio, loving the bubbles. And first of all, what I love about Sergio is that he's on the grass, because again, like uh, uh, Mark was mentioning, the asphalt can be very, very hot. So keep that in mind when walking your pups. Okay, so today we'll make 13 100 degree days in a row at San Antonio International Airport. We will likely in all likelihood be seeing at least 15 plus 100 degree days here in, in a row. Uh, and that is impressive. So we're at least gonna be in second place behind 1962 when we saw 21 100 degree days in a row. We've seen about 23 100 degree days total in San Antonio this year. And again, looking at the forecast, it's not gonna let up anytime soon. Even over the weekend, we have when we have a very small, small, small chance for an isolated shower or storm, it's still going to be well above 100. In fact, tomorrow we're likely to tie a record of 102. In the pollen count today, we've got molds. They're low at 210. And then looking at the aquifer, the aquifer is down six tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours, more than 30 feet below the monthly average for July. Coming up in the forecast, that small chance for an isolated shower over the weekend. Details ahead. Thank you, Sarah. You might have noticed some TV shows are off the air and soon strikes could affect more than that. UPS and even Broadway workers are also on the cusp of walkouts. Los Angeles hotel staff have been staging short term stoppages and American Airlines negotiating with flight attendants. Those unions are all demanding better pay amid rising inflation. CNN's Amy Kyle explains how this all could affect you. Who are we? Labor strikes could soon make it harder to order packages, take a vacation, or enjoy some entertainment. We know how much money UPS makes because we literally make it for them every day. Members of the UPS Teamsters Union are staging practice picket lines. We want to seat at that dinner table. We help put that turkey on that table. Just give a seat. Give us a seat. American Airlines flight attendants are set to vote on a strike authorization this month. Their union's negotiating for an immediate 35 percent raise. That's in line with what United, American and Delta have offered pilots. And in Southern California, 
Hotel employees have been staging short-term walkouts over pay and benefits. Meanwhile, Broadway workers could go on strike as soon as tomorrow. Members of the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees are voting through today on whether to authorize such a walkout. And in Hollywood... Technology cannot replace an actor full on. Unions for writers and actors say streaming services are undercutting their pay and they want restrictions on AI. Now, as it relates to writers, I think they can more easily be replaced by artificial intelligence. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Authorizing a strike doesn't necessarily mean one will happen. Federal regulations make it hard for airline unions to disrupt the industry. For UPS workers, an August 1st strike is looming. The company says it's ready to up its offer on pay and benefits, and talks are set to resume next week. Time check, 937, 83 degrees. You're still watching GMSA at 9. We come back, our live Q&A with a health expert to learn more about how to stay safe and healthy during these intense, hot, humid summer days that we've been having lately. As we head to break, a look at some of the activities going on at public libraries around our city. Over at Central Library this afternoon, it's not Taco Tuesday, it's Taco Thursday. Teens can stop by and build their own tacos. Love that. And over at the Cody Branch Library at 2 p.m., you can beat the heat by watching a movie and making a fun craft. They'll be showing the bad guys for families to watch. For a look at all the events scheduled for today at different public libraries around the Alamo City, head to the KSAT Kids section of KSAT.com. Time for the zoo cam, pretty much my favorite time of day. Okay, so we see the flamingos here, Mark, and there's a new show strategy. You see that they're trying to gather in the shadows. Mm -hmm. Very few are braving the hot sand there because I don't think they have like flip-flops to keep their feet from burning. No flip-flops in sight. No flip-flops in sight. Hey, we'll keep you posted if anyone, if any of these flamingos start wearing flip-flops or aqua socks. It's always a great day to go to the zoo. <laughs> 942, the extreme heat can be a killer. More than 600 people die each year in the U.S. due to extreme heat, often from heat stroke, which is when the body temperature reaches 104 or higher. Because we are all too familiar with the heat here in Texas, we have Consumer Reports health expert Katherine Roberts joining us this morning to talk about the serious health risk associated with the scorching temperatures and high humidity. Good morning, Katherine. Good morning. With so many hot days this summer, Katherine, how can we identify which days are cause for concern and at what temperature do people need to start taking precautions? So there's no real one threshold for when heat gets dangerous. It depends on a lot of things, you know, your personal underlying health conditions, how acclimated you are to the heat, um, and the humidity is a big one too. You know, the more humid the air is, the longer it takes for sweat to evaporate off your skin. And that's the way the body cools itself down is that evaporation. So it really depends. Um, the best thing to do is, you know, keep an eye on the news, keep an eye on the weather service. They issue heat advisories, heat watches, heat warnings. Mornings, um, those are good signs um, that it's going to be a day when you're going to need to pay extra attention to staying cool. So what are some steps people can take to stay cool during these triple digit days? Sure. Um, I mean, staying in air conditioned spaces as much as you can is the big thing, um, you know, especially during the hottest parts of the day, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. or so. Um, you know, if if you don't have AC at home, look for public air conditioned spaces like um, libraries are a good one. Movie theaters. I hear there's um, some big movies coming out this week. So um, <clears throat> and then check with your local health department about um, cooling centers in your area. You know, dressing in lightweight clothing, um, wear sunscreen. I always like to remind people of that because um, sunburn actually damages the skin's ability to cool the body down. So that's another big one. What about hydration during a heat wave? And what can people do to stay healthy and avoid dehydration? Yes. Yeah, so, um, yes, hydration is very, very key. Um, most of the time, you know, when we're not in an extreme heat time, um, you can really rely, most people can really rely on their sense of thirst to tell them when they want, when they need to drink water. But in an extreme heat type of event, um, you want to be drinking water even when you don't necessarily feel thirsty. Um, and water is best. Most people, unless they're athletes, probably don't need to go to, you know, sports drinks. Um, water is great. Um, avoiding alcoholic drinks is a really good idea as well. Um, so I just recommend, you know, bringing water with you kind of wherever you go. 
Okay, so beyond dehydration, what other heat-related illnesses do we need to look out for? So there's a few, um, you know, heat cramps, again, for athletes, um, cramps that that come on when you're doing strenuous activity, but really the big one to be on the lookout for is heat stroke. Um, and like you said at the beginning, that happens when the body's temperature gets up um, to 104 or above. And the things you want to look out for are really those... Um, kind of altered mental state things like confusion, dizziness, um, some nausea, red skin, being unable to sweat um, and fainting, you know, if you pass out. Um, and if that happens to you or someone else, um, you know, you want to get uh, at first call 911, you know, get emergency services um, on their way as soon as you can. And then also equally important, cooling the body down, um, whether that's, you know, if someone's outside spraying a cold hose, um, getting them into a cold shower, anything to cool the body's temperature down. All right, Catherine Roberts with Consumer Reports. Have a good rest of the summer, Catherine. Thank you, you too. Thanks. Thank you, Catherine. Everyone stay cool out there. I know it's hard, Sarah, at 83 degrees already at 946. And you're saying, what, over 104 today? 103 for the high. Look at that. That's going to be the high temperature today. But we were speaking about the heat index values, and I wanted to remind everyone just this past month in June, uh, on the 20th of June, Tuesday, we saw the hottest heat index on record at the airport, and records for the heat index have been taken since the 40s of 116 degrees. You'll remember May and early June were actually good for us for rain. That saturated the grounds. Then we had our first heat high settle over and that allowed for a very hot heat index. The high that day was like 105, but the heat index was 116. Now, we had very high humidity at that time, and it's still humid outside right now. Dew points are in the low 70s, but we're not going to have to worry about a heat index this afternoon. So that is good news, and that's because our humidity is going to be lower in the afternoon. Dew points will be in the 50s. So a dry heat expected for us at 103. Just a reminder, I think sometimes we have short memories, you know, last just last month we were actually experiencing hotter weather in San Antonio, but it is still going to be hot outside so we can commiserate together. 100 in Bernie, 100 in Bulverde, 103 in, at the airport here in San Antonio, 104 in Seguin in New Braunfels, 102 in Hondo, 101 in Utopia, and 101 in Los Maples. So get outside, enjoy some time out there right now before things get too hot. It's 82 degrees and again still humid out there right now, but that humidity will come down later today. South southeast winds at 10 miles per hour. Again, temperatures not too bad in Rock Springs where it's 79, 81 in Uvalde. You can see a lot more sunshine out to the west. Those temperatures are going to be hotter this afternoon. We've got just a little bit of cloud cover out there early this morning, so partly cloudy skies, but by noon we're going to be at 92 degrees and then looking ahead to the afternoon, 100 degrees by 3 p.m., 103 by 5, 6 p.m. for our high today. We won't see a record. The record for the day is 104, but still impressively hot outside. All because of this heat high firmly in place. We have dried out the ground. I mean, there's lots of cracks in soils and things like that because this is our second heat high that settle over for the summer. Notice that all the rain is going to the east of this heat high. And as we look ahead into the future, it's still going to be hot, but temperatures are going to come down by a degree or two. So 102 tomorrow, still hot no doubt, but look at how most of the state of Texas starts to cool down. Amarillo at 85. Then as we look ahead to Saturday, not even 100 degrees in the Dallas Fort Worth area. We're still going to be very hot over the weekend with temperatures above 100 degrees, but we will be on the east side of that heat high. So there is a small potential for an isolated shower or storm. We're only talking 10 to 20%. So do not bank on the rain. You're likely to not see any rain, but there will be a few folks around South Central Texas that see rain. Chances again, 10 to 20%, temperatures well above 100 degrees in the coming days. We're gonna add on to that triple digit heat streak. We've got 13 today, we'll make 13. So by the by this time next week, we'll have 20 probably. 20. Oh, wow. I know, Yeah. very impressively hot. Mm. Stay cool, stay safe. Yes, good advice. It's a trip working with you. I sit, watch you guys on the weekends and yeah. now here I'm standing with you guys, it's just. A little weird for me. We bring the weekend vibes on a Thursday. You do. <laughs> Thank you. 949, 84 degrees. We'll be right back.
We talked about staying healthy during the heat and keeping ourselves safe, but the summer heat can also take a toll on our phones and other devices. Tomorrow on GMS 8 9, RJ Marquez is going to be speaking with the general manager of AT&T to get some tips on how to protect our phones from overheating and what to do if it does. Well, what you're about to see is wrong in all the right ways. It's a growing party trend, the latest example of childhood activity getting an upgrade. ABC's Will Carr takes us inside the world's largest bounce houses for adults. What? It's a new twist on an old pastime. Inside these inflatable walls, the only thing that matters is letting your inner child shine. I lost my socks three times. Bubbles, long slides, climbing walls, Good morning, even a DJ. All right, that's what I Adults having a ball. Woo! Here at Big Bounce America, the world's largest bounce house, those with a little wear on the tires <laughs> transform into silly souls. You are seriously sweating right now. Hey, I was trying to like power through the whole thing. I saw a lot of adults out here acting like kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they were kids again. Absolutely. And that's what we want. We want them to bring the inner kid out. Ways to reminisce on the good old days are popping up everywhere. In Jersey City, Liberty Science Center's After Dark lets adults try the Infinity Climber or check out the Planetarium. New Hampshire, get a thrill at Storyland Nostalgia Night or play your favorite games at Barcade. Back at the bounce house. It's time to take on the Giant, a 900-foot obstacle course. Yay! After heading into the mouth of the beast, I'm scaling, sliding, diving, fighting for, at times, less than graceful. Ugh. Nothing like a nice face plant. Move over, Tom Cruise. We do our own stunts at Good Morning America. After one last climb, a victory flip, and a joyous slide, followed by a state of pure exhaustion. Oh my god, it's such a workout. It never stopped being an obstacle course. Huh? That was hard. <laughs> I like that what one. What do you think about that? I mean, that was legit. We tried to race. You feel like your inner kid is coming out tonight? Yeah, yeah definitely. I haven't stopped laughing for like, you know, the last hour and a half, so. <laughs> That's great. Okay, none of that would work here. And here's uh, one big, big reason why. Ow, 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 uh, ow, yeah. ow. Yeah. The whole thing I, would be hot as heck. I also feel like it probably smells in there. I don't know. Am I being high hmm. maintenance? Like, I just think, like, stinky. I hope everyone's wearing socks. I don't yeah. think you're being yeah. high maintenance. I think it's a valid That's a valid concern. concern. I just, yeah. I don't know. I'm a little bit of a germ germ freak. I, I am, too. I just, I think, like, yeah. I, I would rather be in the air conditioning. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting old and like to stay at home on the couch in the A.C. So that's a no from uh, this team. <laughs> But Thanks for watching, everybody. You don't want to yuck your yum, so. Ow, ow, ow. Stinky. See Have a good day. <laughs>